Oh, oh, hello. Hello and welcome to the Loaded TV live stream. I see we already had some comments rushing in, showing some Tesseract with riser pads nonetheless. How dare you? Sorry. Sorry about that. Had to put something. Oh wow, there's quite a few people already here. Hello, hello Luger and, and others and the guy RPM. We got Tan Tian, nice for tricks and everyday drive. I'm using it since two and a half years now and it was really worth it. Dude, that's good to hear. It's good to hear, it's good. It's good news, man. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Loaded TV live stream. My name is Ethan Koshard. I'm currently sitting here in my constantly messier and messier every single day office where I have our costumes, where I have our camera gear, and it doesn't seem like there's anything that I'm not supposed to show you, so good. That's good, that's good news. Anyways, this is going to be the last episode for season one of Loaded TV. We need to take a little break because it is actually a lot of work, believe it or not. We hope that you guys have enjoyed the show so far. Um, anybody got any tips or any suggestions? Let's see, let's show. So, you guys should really put those nose guards on the dervish. Maybe, maybe. There's bad connection and delay. That's weird. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have my main man, uh, Camilo Cespedes, who's over here on the other side of the partition, jump on them comments section. If you get to your video manager there, you could probably see it. Re re refresh that there guy right there now, right now. Okay. In case you guys don't know, this is the lovely Camilo Cespedes. One of the minds behind Loaded TV here. He, uh, he's, he's a good dude. He's all right. Another Greener Pastures, please. Tell Patrick Switzer. Tell him. He will be there, I swear. Oh, poor connection, sorry. Check out the, whoa, whoa. Got a lot of comments popping in. No? Video manager one time, refresh. Oh, go to our channel then. Okay, sorry guys, sorry. More Kendama trick tips, please. Ooh, Alberto, did you bring your Kendama? Nope, sorry, that's gonna have to wait, unfortunately. Uh, show you guys a new board. All right, all right, all right, check this out. Check this out, this one's, this one's for the dude who requested it. Boom! What do you know about bench boarding? Sturdy, enough room for two, possibly three butts. Nose manual action. You can do a shove it if you want, if you wanna roll an ankle, maybe break an ankle, whatever works best for you. Anyways, let's let's keep looking at these comments. The boosted board should be called the loaded boosted Vanguard. It looks fine, but it's just different. Yes, maybe. Oh no, it's up to boosted really. Ah, uh, your chubby unicorn broke last year? Well you are in luck. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's see. Okay, with with my friends we have all your boards, Tesseract, Fat Tail, Chubby, Tantian, Bonger, Wow, Kantaka, Overland, uh, Dervish, and Icarus. They are awesome. We love them and show them all day long. Thank you so much, Pavel. That is beautiful kind words to hear on a Monday morning here in Los Angeles. Any news about the Bonger V2? Not even quite sure what you mean about that one, buddy. What's a Bonger V2? Where did you hear such things? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, can't say anything. Who knows? Um, hey, are you guys looking into working with carbon fiber? I love it and, if, and it creates an in, in, in insane ride feel. We have been messing around with carbon here and there. We even tried it in Overland. Uh, believe it or not, it came out flexier, but it looks super cool. Um, we're actually working with this other material that resembles carbon fiber, but is much more eco-friendly and cheaper and cool looking. So you might see that in a couple a couple boards to come. Um, let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you guys going to make a bigger wheel than the Kegel? Andrew, you can read minds. Um, Benedict Imperial, hello from, yes, Philippines. I missed it this year and I apologize. I wish I was there. Any 50 plus inch boards in the near future? I've been saying that we should redo the dancer, but that's just me. Maybe I'm alone in my, in my requests in the world, but I'm used to that. It's been a lonely life. Uh, travel to Russia, would love to, but not for me. Maybe this guy or maybe that guy. Okay. Let's see, go to Spain and do some traveling around. Dude, I agree. Spain is like literally one of my favorite countries ever and Barcelona is, I'm pretty sure made of magic. I'm, I, I'm positive that Disney World kind of uh, took 
Barcelona as its uh, inspiration. Uh, what'd you miss? You didn't miss too much, sir. Let's see, let's see. I would love a test rack with chubby unicorn construction. Single kick, the flares are just a little farther apart. Oh, what's this? Uh, you're answering... Oh, perfect. That's great. Uh, you can do a square lip 65 millimeter wheel, please. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Oh, poor connection, guys. Sorry if it's lagging right now. Someone please ask him for a travel to Brazil of Loaded. We've been trying for many years. Brazil's far, man. It's expensive. We actually have quite a few Brazilian riders out there, so that way we don't have to buy plane tickets to go over there. Where is the loaded hammerhead being <laughs> re-released? I'm just gonna let that one slide by. I'm just gonna let that go on by. Hello, Hector Iglesias Callejo. I, I hope I pronounced that right. And hipster skates. No homo, bro. It's all good. No bromo. Uh, can you be my uncle if you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they're gonna work, so... Would that be your mom's sister? Yeah, right? We'll get back to that one. Who, Brazilian riders, uh, there's two. We have Fruk Alves, we have Alexandra Maia, we have Nick Crown, we have Renan Lazarotti, who's a orangutan. Uh, we have a filmmaker that is currently MIA, uh, Marcos, Marcos Ferreira. Uh, I know there's another one that I'm forgetting over there, Caio Cesar. Um, we're looking at some other people. Uh, you gotta check out the hills and roads in Italy and have and hey, have you guys ever thought about traveling to the Midwest Hills? We would love to have you. We've thought about it, we have. Italy, we haven't thought about it, because Italy is pretty far, and we're not quite sure what the downhill scene is like out there. Alberto says he has friends. Oh, and what, what a perfect chance to introduce one of the lead creative minds behind Loaded TV, Mr. Alberto Alepus, as he eats edamame. Hello. Say hello to the hello, comments and people. Hello, hello. All right. Um, so Alberto's a vegetarian, in case you can't tell. So those would probably be little Slim Jims, but uh, it'll make do. Whatever keeps him alive. Oh, we got more comments coming in. What's Pablo's favorite sphere, someone asked. Uh, are you half Filipino that I've been waiting to know for years? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Got you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and Eddie Good, yeah, right on Eddie Good. Oh, it'd be nice to go to Israel, I agree. Um, what is the biggest difference between the Icarus and the Tan Tien? Because I have a Tan Tien, I'm thinking about buying the Icarus. Icarus is a crazy different flex. The Tan Tien and the Dervish share a lot of the same flex patterns, but the Icarus is definitely a world apart. You get a little bit more dynamic flexing out of it, where the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. It's kind of a sort of thing that you gotta like try to really know. It feels so different. It's crazy, like what he just said. It looks like a time can, but it's definitely not even close. Uh, Camila, you need to go to the Philippines. I do need to go to the Philippines. Everybody. Yeah. Needs. Everybody yeah. needs to go. Yeah, to the Philippines. I agree. Uh, bring us to the Philippines. Hey, for to the Philippines. for Alepus, one another Bruno and Toadie video. Toadie is actually currently here in Los Angeles, probably playing video games at the house right now. I want to do another video though. <laughs> with Bruno and Toadie. Trust me, I really want to as well. So I'm gonna wash my hands. Too. All right. Well, when Alberto is back from washing his hands from filthy, filthy vegetables, he will be giving us some very much needed to know pointers on how to film properly. A lot of people think it's just aim, shoot, film, record, upload. No, there's a little bit more to it, especially if you got a DSLR. If you're filming with your phone, hey. Um, don't delete this video after doing it, please. We do not plan on deleting this. We think it's gonna live forever on the YouTubes. Uh, there is a writer of Dance Freestyle in Brazil. We're working on that, man. Working on it. We're trying to, we're trying to find someone. But it's tricky. It's tricky. Oh, you guys wanna see Inception? Bah, bah, bah. Oh my God, bah, bah. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of scary. Do you plan to release protection for Tantian Dervish? Files that would be similar to the Apex 40 design. I created this. Can you be interested? Can, can you be so interested? You mean like nose guards? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we'll just have original do it. Yeah. Since it's they easier. did it, if we do it, it's gonna be like, oh my god, we're so original. 
Uh, you get it. You get it. <laughs> yeah. What's about a push deck? Any plans? There were plans. In fact, we could probably breeze by it and take a look at it real quick, but uh, we had to kick it to the back burner because we had other things that we were working on, mainly the snowboard at the time. Is there going to be a challenge series this year? Would you like to see a challenge series? Should we do a challenge series incorporated into Loaded TV? Yeah. Do you guys want it to be part of Loaded TV? Maybe we do a radical skateboarding challenge series. What do you What do you guys <laughs> oh, think? Yeah. Wow. That would That would be sick. Like the lamer, the better. Yeah. Or not lamer, the more radical, really. Yeah. So yes, yes, yes. I'm hearing lots of yes from Mr. McGem. Oh, meet uh, other housemate Alex Colorido, our photographer and downhill skateboarder extraordinaire. Hello, everyone. We will be. See you soon. We'll be meeting up with him in a little bit because he's going to be showing us how to take a proper portrait. Um, so yeah, so here we have Alberto and he's going to give us a couple little pointers on how to properly set up your camera to get the best quality footage you can whenever you're filming. Of course, this means that you have a DSLR, which we currently use the Sony a7S. So if you don't have a DSLR, I mean, it, it's all the same, but there's three key things you have to think about when you want to set up your camera. One is ISO, which is the how sensible the camera is going to be with light. You have your shutter speed, which is how long you want each frame to be exposed. Kind of like the, not, not it's not exactly that. These are protections for. What am I reading? Anyway, and then you have the aperture, which is how much light you're letting go through the lens. So. If you're shooting daylight, I would highly suggest, especially if you're doing these DSLR cameras, that you use the lower the ISO, the, the cleaner the image. So if ISO is 100, it's going to be way sharper than if ISO was 1000. That's good now. Hear that? Lower ISO but is better. Oh. A little tip when you work with DSLRs, I don't know about Sony, uh, definitely happens with Canon, 100 for video is a little le more noisy than 160. So if you're doing Canon, make sure you, when you select ISO, if you want to do 100, do 160, and then you go at more multiples, like 320, 640, every three steps. So it's just a little cleaner. So yeah, ISO, the smaller the better, depending on how much you like, the less light, the more, the higher the ISO. Then you have the shutter speed. If you're shooting, uh, 24 frames, 30 frames, then you should totally, um, I'm, I'm losing track, I'm not used to talk. <laughs> anyway, um, aperture, the bigger, the wider the aperture, the more out of focus things are going to be. Um, shutter speed, yeah, what I was saying is about shutter speed. Shutter speed is good if you're not shooting in slow-mo. It's good to keep it in between 60 and 125. I usually like it at 125 because even if everybody is enjoying the 60 frames per second this day, that is like very video game smooth looking motion. Um, it's not cool. Movies are not made in 60 frames. Not at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, working between 60 and 125, if you go like 60 frames, maybe you can like make it a little sharper the more you pull up the shutter speed the more defined motion is gonna be like here 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 instead of like a that is very 60 frames looking and not very cinematic um, I don't know uh, that's like basic stuff make sure you expose for the right light don't get overexposed the highlights because it looks all like Super video. So Alberta is it underexposed a little bit. Is it little better bit. is it better for your footage to look a little dark or is it better for there to be like white and blown out sections? Uh, I tend to what I've learned from these cameras it's always better to underexpose like one stop or two. It's, it's always comments. better to have like a the, um, darker image because the, the viewfinder is usually not very truthful to what you're gonna get on your screen so it, it depends on the camera. You get used to it. You learn everything. Perfect. Well, thankfully, this video is going to be saved on our library. So if you missed any of that, you can go back and check it out. Okay, we have a free camera hack. Free camera hack. Um, camera hack. Okay, we need a 50. So you guys know what a macro is? Have you guys seen those beautiful pictures of butterflies or like flowers from really close? And you're like, damn, I can't get the focus ring to be closer than 0 0.45 meters or feet or distance. Uh, 
So if you want to get really, really, really close to the image, imagine you have your camera here, okay? It's on, you turn it on. Uh, make sure it has a battery. Um, anyway, <laughs> what you do, it looks sketchy, but it's not at all. Take the lens, put it upside down, like upside down? Backwards? Backwards. Invert? Put it backwards, Inverse. you see, like this, and look through it. And then you, you can get like super close and you can get really cool details. And it is called doing macros without spending money on a macro lens. It's pretty cool. Camera hacks. I did not know about that until literally last week. So that's actually going to come in handy. Yeah, we'll try to throw some more of that in season two. If you guys like it. Let some, more, some more film theory stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, Alberto, would you mind joining me quickly to learn how to shoot a beautiful, sexy portrait for your Tinder profile or Facebook or YouTube thumbnail, whatever you're into? Anyways, yeah, no Tinder, man. Keep it yeah. real. That's right, Keep Bumble, Bumble all no, the way. No Bumble. O okay, Cupid. You know, e what? There's e even more. Eharmony, <laughs> Match.com. Go uh, out and talk to people face to face. Christian, that's, Christian that's Mingle, ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> Trust me. Christian All right, here, here we're coming into the catacombs of Loaded, where we have the wonderful Alex Colorado currently setting up a film little portrait studio thingy here with his nice soft boxes and whatnot. That sound we're hearing in the background is Danny making a whole bunch of noise. Let's go close that door real quick. We'll be right back, Colorado. <laughs> Mad scientist Danny Carper. Hello. <laughs> My closest. All right, sorry. There's a little laggy of a connection here right now. Oh, God. And the gimbal's freaking out. Okay, it seems to be doing better. So let's flip this around. Boom. Now say hello to Mr. Alex Colorado from Minnesota. Yep, Midwest. Here we are. Going to take some portraits today using some flashes, CDSF, and then if we have time, we can go outside and show you how to do a really easy setup with just a deflector, which is that guy, which only costs about 30 bucks. So you can do it yourself at home. All right, so Alberto is our lovely subject who is bedazzling himself right now. Yeah, so basically how this works, this is a super simple, you can come over here, super simple flash setup. We don't have any fancy background or anything, so basically how the two lights work is this light here. It's got it turned up super bright, and it's just going to blast a stream of light on this wall here, which is going to make it just go completely white. So you're not going to see any of this texture or any of this dirt or anything. It's just going to be white. So a good way to do a cheap background without a big piece of paper or something. And I got this extra little piece of cardboard here, which is going to block the light from my subject who's going to stand here, so it just hits the wall. If this wasn't here, the light from this would also hit their face and kind of mess with the uh, dynamic I'm trying to achieve here. So <laughs> this is just another cheap way to just control the light. And then this big guy is going to be our main light source. And uh, the bigger the softbox is, the softer the light on the person's face will be. The softer the light is, that means the more flattering it will be. So oh. Always got to make the boys look good. Yeah, so. especially whatever is being assembled over here. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep that hush for now. <laughs> yeah, and then this little reflector here, basically what this is going to do is going to do another little bit of fill to keep uh, not any weird shadows under the nose or the eyes. And also add to what's called a catch light, which really you'll be able to see a little uh, glimmer in the person's eyes hmm. to make those eyes sparkle and really pop. So would you say this is this is the setup to like blow out the background so much that it looks like the person is literally just floating in space? Yeah, just standard white back background portrait. Yeah, that's all this light is doing is just making this completely white. If this wasn't here, there would there'd be like weird shadows and see all this texture. And so mm -hmm. the person is here, this light's behind them, so none of this light is gonna touch the subject. It's just all gonna be used to make this completely white. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, that is that is definitely going to be a portrait. This isn't our typical uh, photo, but this is, this is how we do things on the board. A conglomeration of all of our past costumes and current. 
Bow, chicken. Ow, ow. We're going off the camera. This is a Pentax 6.7 medium format film camera. It's kind of my personal thing. I like to shoot film. Medium format, it's really big negative. So really high resolution, super crisp, super sharp. If you compare it to like a megapixel, it'd be like over 100 megapixels on a camera. And this costs like 500 bucks. 100 megapixel cameras and costs like $50,000. So this is a lot cheaper. It's more fun. It's got these cool wood handles. <laughs> got to kind of use a little trickery to make flashes work with it, but that's what's going on here. So <laughs> it's brilliant. All right, I've already you done yet, man. I'm putting on the utility belt. So which which one of these buttons calls your mom to come pick you up? Oh, I think my mom is probably watching right now. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> Living the dream. Film, pursuing my dreams. Film right school now. brought me here, mom. Whoa. Flash my like pretty crazy streaming from my phone here. See how these comments are doing. I haven't been looking. Is Alberto's mom watching? Oh, wow. Loaded newsletter says. Thank you, Camilo. So Alberto, as I mentioned before, since this light is just for the background, we're gonna ask you. Massage chair. See, kids, you don't need fancy gear, you just gotta use your brain. That's right, use your thinky tank. Because we're skateboarders, so we keep it cheap, keep it lean, mean. Green pain. Chest forward. <laughs> That's a beautiful pose there, I'll back up. So we're just gonna go in. Notice here. that, look at that. Make sure the focus, you always wanna make sure the focus is on the eyeball. And then one, two, three. One, and do another one for good luck. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. Ooh, sassy Vader. Turn your head a little bit more towards me, Alberto. Any second now. <laughs> yeah, that's the one the kids are gonna be looking for at home. That's right, we're gonna make prints and posters the size of your queen bed back in your um, mom's place. You wanna go outside and do like another easy one? Sure, yeah, let's see what you got. So we're gonna take this, uh, we're gonna take the ship outside real quick. Let me flip the camera around. Boom. That's pretty insecticized. Uh, but yeah, behold, behold the setup. Look, you got your strong light, blows out the background. Got your big old soft box that flatters the face, right? Did I say that correctly? Yeah. And then this, and this little, this little reflective light to help catch a little bit more on your face to make you look make sexy. those eyes. Just saying, um, what was that show? Get my ride and make it pop. <laughs> <laughs> Ish, man. Sure. All right, right on. West Coast Customs, baby. Part, Dude. All right, cool. So we're going to mosey on outside, taking just the reflective panel light thing. Okay. Alberto, we need, we need your costume self. That's fine. We can do it. Your alter ego. We can do it without that, Oh, everybody say hello to uh, Stoked Mentoring. Hi, Stoked. Awesome nonprofit organization uh, made up by cool people, thankfully. <laughs> That's right, the coolest. All right, so we're venturing downstairs to Rob Deerdeck's old fantasy factory, which is now the Loaded Factory. He didn't leave any of the cool toys, uh, unfortunately. Oh, a little, little bit of a poor connection here. And I think we're back. We're back, we're good, we're back. Cool. Is it, is it gonna work outside? Yeah, it should work outside. I'm not on the Wi Fi. Okay. That's right, baby, unlimited data. Get at me if you need a hot spot. Actually, don't, because I think that costs extra. You can actually do it right in here. Yeah? yeah? So the warehouse usually has subpar lighting. We'll do it outside. But Alex Colorado thinks we should still go outside because the lighting in here is always subpar. More interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. Find some greeneries. We don't have a subject? Where did Alberto go? What about Dusty? We lost our beautiful muse, our French girl. I think he's uh, getting back into character. Yeah. You know what? Why don't we just use Justin? All right. Oh, I heard a voice. Oh, Dusty, do you want to be our beautiful subject for a photo real quick? All right. We got our main lathe man, Dusty Ham, coming down with his striking Greek-like features. I know he's from Camarillo, I think. This is important, Ethan. Oh, yeah. I was on a bean break. <laughs> Don't want to get hangry. <laughs> Don't want to be hangry's nows. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do this real quick. See if you can notice anything cool behind me. 
Oh, it's gone. All right, Dusty, you're gonna be our subject? Sure. Dusty's coming with us. All right, everybody say hello to Dustin Hampton. Outside? Outside. Uh, doing? Yeah, we got Dusty, because you're beaning up right now. All right. Why Dusty? Have Taz do the photo? Because Taz is too attractive and he would break the camera. Everybody knows Taz is the most attractive pup to ever pup, to ever doggo. All right. Okay, Taz, you stay. Welcome to the beautiful outside loaded parking lot, a tropical oasis known only by its sheer beauty. The lagoon is that way, but we park over here because you don't want to spoil the lagoon. Wow, maybe let's not do it next to the vent. Sorry guys, a little, little bit of technical difficulties there. They're running the CNC to build a robot army and so we can't quite uh, use that area. In fact, we might have to speak really loudly right now. Hello? Okay. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around. Bop. Here we got a little more interesting background. Put Dusty in here. Put some nice greenery. Maybe take one more step to your left, Dusty. Yeah. It's called dappled light in the industry. Light is dappled on oh, his face. Just, the dappled light on his dapper face? The dappled light on his dapper face. Oh, beautiful. And then uh, we're gonna actually need your assistance here, Ethan. Oh, that's, that's fine. I can multitask. Where do you want me? We're now going to harness the power of the sun. Sun gods. I, I betrayed take, them once, I'll betray them again. If I take a photo of Dusty now, he's just going to be all dark. There's going to be a few spots that are too bright. If you want that, it's okay, but we're going to make him look real good here with a little bit of gold Ooh, shine. Ooh, I saw that. So we, uh, gold you member. Up, you use your brain, you look up and you find the sun. And you use this here reflector, point it right on his face, and that's going to fill it in. And make him look real nice. All right. Oh, Sean, I'm going to need little assistance. It's cool, man. I'm helping that tan. It's well needed. Oh, wait. There's a gust. There's a wind. A mighty wind. Okay. Alright, so, yeah. Looking good? Frame it however you like it. The eyes are Oh, there's a mighty wind. There you go. Ta-da. Orchard tips with Alex Colorita. Whoa, dude, you look like you just opened up a national treasure. We released the Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, All Dusty. Right. Thank you, Mr. Colorito, Always for your, be for your time. Too, and say thank you. That's right. Nobody likes a photo stolen from them. That is, that is true. They say that a photo steals your soul. Dusty, how do you feel? Uh, like my soul has been restored. Oh, restored. Ooh, that's right. Get your soul refunds here. <laughs> Federal and state. All right, gentlemen. Gentlemen, you first, so I can get that amazing footage you guys watching. Right oh my God, the fearsome Taz. 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 Little sheep butt. Taz. Okay. All right, Dusty. So, bringing us to our last and final piece of the loaded live stream is the mastermind Dustin Hampton and longtime orangutan ambassador showing us how to lathe wheels the proper way. Let's start the proper way, right? All right. Okay. Cool. So here we go. We're going up to our fancy lathe balcony up there. That's where we lathe wheels and sing serenades to all the lovely ladies that never visit us. So we all got girlfriends. They don't even like coming here. Whoop. All right, don't mind the junk and the stuff and the things and the blanks and whoa, what are those wheels? And then, yeah, this way. So. Welcome to the tip top of the cream crop. If you guys want to check out some wheels that we kind of played with, we got a, this is a Kegel. This used to be a Kegel. Wow. Now it's a similar contact patch to like a skiff. I don't know what you'd use that for, maybe like one run down a three ride hill. But I bet it'd feel good. And then we also have, uh, I don't know if you guys remember these, menopause, some prototype uh, new in heats. We laid that down to the same size as a four prez. Ooh, dibs. And then we also just have like a purple four prez stone ground. Could be fun. I don't know. Turned an in heat into a moranga. This used to be an in heat. Oh wow. Now it's a moranga. Doctors hate them. Slim fast. Can't work this quick. All right, Dusty. What are what are the key things to know 
about operating a lathe and lathing funky wheels into sweet, sweet wheels. Well, with this lathe, you have to always make sure that when you put the wheel on the cullet, you have to push this guy back. Boom. And what that does is this little metal piece right here, if you want to zoom in right there, it expands and locks into the core. So it holds the wheel in place. You also want to make sure where your bits are being held in this little doohickey right here. You want to make sure that this is tight so it doesn't move. Um, I guess, uh, and then safety gear. It's always good to wear safety goggles when you're doing this stuff. But, you know, we've inhaled a lot of urethane dust over the years. And oh, yeah. I mean, my, my whooping cough keeps me awake at night, but only for an hour. Yeah, the safety goggles help because uh, the urethane actually heats up. And you'll get like a hot, molten piece of urethane in your face. <laughs> oh, my it's not God. Really fun. Okay, that's not happened to me. And this is to prevent you from getting lung cancer. Ah, always good. Oh, we have a poor connection right now. I hope it improves, everybody. Sorry, sorry about it. Sorry about this. All right, Dusty. So basically everything is kept super tight and taut so that way when you're adjusting the shape of the wheel, it happens so consistently. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Right okay. now, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, I'm working on some side set stems. So as you can see, this lip is right into the bearing seat. And I already did this, but I need to round the lip over. Ah, yes. Unfinished. Unfinished. It needs the rounding. Oh my god, it's so delicious looking here. It's like sherbet, if sherbet was like a matcha green tea powder or something. Oh, sorry. Okay, don't play with the urethane dust while Dusty is working. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, only a little bit. Just a little bit more. Alright, so it's locked in place. Sprinkle it for my homies. Then... Flip her on. There she goes, a spinning. So beautiful. See if I can get the focus here. Nah, it doesn't want to. That was what, maybe like 10 seconds on the lathe right there? Yep, just giving it a little round over. Now we gotta do it to the rest of these wheels. Oop, sharp lip there. Okay, so, that was that. It was beautiful. Now, what would be, not everybody has access to a lathe at their house or $12,000 to buy a lathe for their house. What would be a more economical way to go about this if you're, let's say, a kid who has his dad's tools? Uh, there's a couple of ways. I don't know if you guys can think of any ways or know of any tricks, then leave it in the comments. But uh, Ethan rigged up a nice little uh, power drill system where you can lock the wheel into a power drill using, uh, I think it was a kingpin and 10 mil bearings. And then you can also use a bicycle. So I think we got that set up down here if you guys want to check it out. All right, so that was our, that was our super awesome industrial machine that we are lucky enough to have access to. But not everybody's as lucky as us, unfortunately. So. We're gonna teach you some tricks of the trade. Just like how Alberto taught you how to shoot macro with a 50 mil. Now we're going to learn how to lathe wheels ghetto style. We might need a hand though. Alberto, yeah. you wanna help us out real quick? We need your help again. Yeah. There was also a couple comments. You guys wanna see uh, Justin's crib? His crib? He has a crib? Yeah. When did we give him a home? No, he lives here. This is his home. Oh yeah, we'll do an MTV Cribs episode all with Justin of the warehouse. Okay. He protects this place. Him and Taz simultaneously. The superpower duo. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, there's yeah. Justin oh. just floating. Oh, but he's not in his bed right now. <laughs> he's in the six here. So, this is where we've banished Justin. He sleeps on that couch right there. It's actually pretty nice. We even put a ladder for him to climb up. But, you know, he just likes to hang out. <laughs> Literally. Literally. I don't know how he does it. All right, Dusty, what, 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 do we have, what do we have here? Oh, yeah, someone asked, it's like, oh, you need a proper lathe? Lathe. lathe. Yeah, yeah. You like, don't need a proper lathe, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Ethan rigged this up. It's just a kingpin right here. 
some uh, old 10 mil bearings to like keep it stable and true, and then some washers and uh, speed rings. Let's take, a, let's take a closer look at the inside and outside of that, that there wheel. Outside, look at that, that cup washer gripping into the urethane with that kingpin tightening it all the way down with a nut on the other side and more washers to make sure that the wheel doesn't yeah. spin on the bearing. <laughs> we could even just shoot. take it apart. Boom, look at that. Now, the only issue with this is that it's way more of an eyeball job. So with that lathe up there, there's nice little dials and increments so you can make sure each wheel is pretty much exactly the same. That's why Dusty's lathed wheels are always the dankest. But with something like this, you're able to turn square lift wheels into a free yard wheel pretty easily. Take some rough grit sandpaper. Can't really tell, but that's like 32 grit and we ghetto rig this as well. And now you're gonna grab that there power drill. Hoots. Oh, it's super strong. And then spin it. And you work, you work those edges, baby. Now it does take much longer doing this because the wheel doesn't spin as fast. But with persistence, determination, and a little bit of arm strength, you can feel good about yourself again like it was 2015. There you go, look at that, look at that. So the only issue, as I said, is that to be truly accurate with this thing is a little bit trickier, but over time, you're gonna get good at anything with practice, right? But look at that, from a four prez with a 90 degree square lip to a beveled edge, kind of like an old gravity drifter wheel. Anybody remember those? I remember those. Yeah, I did remember Yeah, those. you remember those, yeah, yeah, that's classic. Before Otang was Otang, that was the yeah, orange wheel. The yeah. other orange wheels yeah. right there. <laughs> and so, with enough practice on that thing, you can eventually make one of these. Look at that. Nah, we're just kidding. We got these from Harfang recently. They're gonna be on our website in a little bit, but uh, Maybe one day we'll be able to make this. I don't know how they do it, but they look so cool. They look so cool. And look, this one's got sparks. It doesn't really work when you just throw it against the ground. I've tried. All right, Dusty, thank you so much for your time, expertise. Boom. Dustin Hampton, long time ranked team bastard and probably one of the longest employees here at Loaded too. He survived, survived many eras and epochs. Cool, That's thank it. you again, Dusty. Yeah, All right. Oh, there's also, there's also uh, the bike that you could use as well. So basically, this is gonna take like three friends, and well, two friends, including yourself. So one person cranks, cranks the pedals and spins the back wheel. Another person jams the board up against. I'm gonna flip the camera, y'all. Flipped. And so as you spin that wheel and crank it, your skateboard wheel push against the bike wheel turns, and then you have another homie come through and slice. This works really good for making rain grooves if you want rain wheels, because it's pretty limited and, and kinda, kinda sketchy to be honest, because you know, it's always shifting around. It's definitely not a one-man job. There's three men, at least three mans, including myself. More power, motorbike. That's you right. You put a motorbike, you get the full power. You put a Scary. moped or a motorbike, yeah, that'll definitely be the quickest. All right, all right. Uh, sorry, guys. We haven't been looking at the comments. We've had Camilo answering the comments for us. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, cool. Thank you for... All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Wouldn't it be hard to lay out a flat spot without bracing the drill against something? Yes. That is one thing I did not cover. Sorry about that. Let me flip this around. Is that when you do the drill lathe, uh, it's pretty hard to get a flat spot out because you're always having to, like, hold the shaking drill as you're trying to just file down one raised level. Um, that's where an actual lathe would come in handy. But if you can figure out a way to do it economically, please let us know in the comments. We would love to see it and learn and steal your idea for corporate profit. <laughs> no, totally kidding. That's not true. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna conclude our Loaded TV live stream. We hope you learned something. We always try to spread the knowledge to whoever we can and wherever we can, whenever we can. Um, and this will conclude season one of Loaded TV. I know, it's sad. But season two is coming, and it's coming hot and fast. Yeah, just, uh, I can't make that joke. But anyways, thank you for tuning in. Keep the comments coming. We'll keep on responding. Uh, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Ciao.